Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna cover more of the advanced operating skills for a skid steer. Check this out. video, I'm calling it advanced skills. It's really just the next level. If you saw the previous video, uh, it's more beginner, just going over the controls. Now I want to go into a little bit more grading, uh, uh, spreading, uh, things like that. So uh, as I've said, with others, I'm not claiming to be an expert. So you're going to see what I do and what I've learned. Uh, but I also want to hear comments from operators who do this every day. So uh, now on our site, I'm going to go over grading first. So the biggest thing, I've already, again, I'm not gonna go over the controls because we just did that in the previous. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you watch that section. Typically though, for grading, uh, you gotta make sure that booms all the way down. So the way the skid steers are designed is that if you lower that boom to where it stops, the back corner of that bucket is going to be level with the tracks. And that's where you're using that kind of as like a level plane. Then all you're doing is you're rolling, is the only thing you're doing to manage your grade, is you're rolling right or left to manage how much you're cutting into the ground. So like right there, I can see where I started, I was actually on a high spot. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and I'm leaving that boom all the way down and then I just start driving forward slowly and I'm gonna cut into it. You're almost trying to get, uh, get some material in the blade or in the bucket because that's what you're using almost like a dozer blade to spread. So you'll see some will drop out. And then I can use whatever material I have there as I'm backing up. This is where if I feel those low spots, I can two things. I can use the, if I still have it bottomed out, the, have it all the way, I'll be able to knock some of that. But I can also just see some of the areas that are gonna need material. And I'm kind of shaking it out in there. Like right there, I can feel, I just went and there's a large, shaking that all the way out. Again, always watching where you're backing. So as I see that plane in front of me now, I can see, and I'm, again, we're using a handheld camera in some of these if you don't see the best, but I can see I've got piles of material that are there. You know, I've got some holes that are right there, but you're all constantly assessing where you're going and trying to get material into that. It's very similar to using a dozer if you ever use one. Um, so now I'm gonna, same thing though, I'm gonna drop this all the way down, flatten that blade. And this time I'm gonna go over just a little bit because I see there's a lot of material over here. And I'm gonna fill that bucket right there. And again, I'm just driving it through. And then again, backing up. I know there's that low spot back here. So right there, I can feel it. So again, assessing what I filled in there. And again, these are just kind of quick and repetitive. You're going back and forth, flatten that bucket. I can see I'm going to go into a hole there, so. Pulling that up. Can't stress enough backing up in a skid, especially get other people on job site. The newer machines have a backup camera over here. I'm looking at, I'm also got a rear view mirror above my head, but looking over your shoulders, things like that. Now, again, when you feel those big holes you're going through, that's your time. And you can kind of use the bottom of the blade to still smooth stuff out. If I'm backing up, if I'm not floating the blade, when I'm backing up, if I have it all the way down and I press just a little bit of downward pressure, if you do have any material uh, that's clumped up or anything like that, you're actually gonna kind of trap it. It's a lot like a box blade. Um, you're trapping it behind the, the back of the blade, the bucket, but then also anything that goes under there is gonna get broken up. So that's where you can do a lot of work in reverse too, like that. Again, you'll see it's important. You want that material right in front of your blade. So right there, I don't need to go any further because I can see that hole right there. I'm gonna try and pull some material back. Again, setting that blade down. Trying not to spit. 
in my track. Then you're just starting to read your grade. I kind of call it that seat of the pants feel. Because whatever you're feeling, what the machine's doing, you can drive through it and you know there's areas there that you have to add material to. So if you actually get the material, again, sometimes if you float the blade too, but if I have material, it's a little bit of weight, and that'll actually pack down, compact any of those. So I can see there's a low spot right there. So you can see it's starting, you know, I'm starting to fill in all those holes and everything I had ahead of time. Again, I obviously we went in for training purposes to kind of tore up the ground, but this is all it is repetitive back and forth going over there, just taking off little uh, layers of dirt uh, using the blade to fill in or bucket any holes there. So I'll keep doing some of that to get it roughly to, I call it a rough cut, a rough grade. So now that's just grading. Again, I did some, uh, that's, there is no, I, I don't think there's a video or anyone that's gonna teach you how to be good at that. I call it, it's very similar to a bulldozer. You just gotta get out and do it. Uh, I am by no means, again, an expert at this, but I, you know, the biggest thing, mistakes I've made early, if not making sure that booms all the way down, cause that's controls the bottom of the back of the bucket, which will make it level with the tracks. If you have that up an inch or two, then what you're doing is you're you're offsetting from the track level. So you're actually gonna, there's no way you can get completely level because you're always fighting that a little bit with your blade because your bucket's gonna be a little bit angled. So that's probably the biggest mistake I made early on in CLI new operas, making sure you're all the way down. And then also using the back of that, like a box blade. I think that's important. Now, to spread material. So with that, I'm gonna go in, just grab some material. So to spread, you know, we're just going to do in sand, dirt here, you know, typically it's going to be gravel. Two different ways on doing that. Obviously you want to start out as far away from you as you can and work your way backwards. Uh, just because it's easier if you're going out and then cleaning it up as you work your way back. The other thing I'll say, when you come back here, whatever pile you're coming off of, try and make your turns in that one spot at the same time. And what I mean by that is if you're doing a bunch of this all over the job site, you're going to see from the outside, I am just disturbing, I'm breaking up the ground. And it's not, instead of making all these turns, what you want to try and do is keep it clean. So wherever you're spoil, your pile you're pulling off of, pull back, try and do a gradual turn so you don't take up, tear up the ground too bad, but then go straight to where you're going without doing as minimal turns. That's going to avoid tearing up the ground. So with this, the two ways, I'll show you two. So either it's really, the two ways are either dumping forward or reverse. Um, with this, if I'm going backwards, I'm just raising this and it's really just opening it up and I can see, I can control. And I often will shake the bucket a little bit to try and get an even flow. And I'm just backing up again, watching where you're going. 
but trying to just get a nice spread there. And then typically what's gonna happen after you do that, you're either gonna do, let's say a couple rows of that. I'll do, let's say I'll do one more. All you're trying to do is find that one, you know, fill in wherever you're trying to add material to. Try and spread it somewhat evenly. And then eventually, let's say if I spread this all the way out, then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and go back through the grating. So I'm making sure I'm all the way down. I've got extra material there. And then I'm doing the same thing as I did before. Now I've got extra material that raised some of that area. And then I'm just going through to spread in and hit any of those holes. So this will be the same thing then I'm doing using the back of the blade. And that's how I can fill some material in there. Now, the other way, if I get in there a load of dirt. And I kind of just made a mistake here. Not, not a big one, but when you're loading, the other thing is if you're gonna spread, it's only gonna spread as even as what's in your bucket. So if you see on this side, see how I picked up a little bit more on the left, I'm over. That's all this means is when I drop, I'm gonna drop more on the left. So if you can control that ahead of time, try and get it even. So if I, So this is where, if you see, I kind of shook it out a little bit and it's a lot more even. That's just gonna help you too when you're spreading. Other way is spreading going forward and then kind of back dragging it out. So if I do this, raise it up, and I'm basically doing the same thing, I'm just going forward. A little bit tougher to see, I, and I'm not a huge fan of this because unless you know you're completely, your sight's clear, like I got a bucket right in front of where I'm driving, so. Um, it's tougher to see, but then all you're doing is while I'm doing that, I'm either floating the bucket or just using the back of that box blade and I'm basically back dragging through it, either floating the blade, which I am now. So you're kind of doing two, two passes in one there. You're, uh, while you're going out to dump, you're then back dragging it out. So that's another way you can do it too. Okay, so again, not clean grade there, but again, just some tips. The best way to learn this, get in the cab, find a practice area, just go out and try and grade. That's the only way you can learn that. Okay, let me get a bucket. Okay, the next thing I wanna cover is this center of gravity. Uh, you know, skid steers, they are deceivingly, people be think because they're smaller, uh, a lot of newer operators think they're safer. Uh, the smaller machine, I can't get hurt. I would actually say the opposite. They're, if you're in a 20 ton bulldozer, that thing is gonna be a lot tougher to flip over than maybe a 8,000 pound skid steer. So uh, it's actually the opposite. So you gotta be really careful. Now, number one instant with a skid steer, you'll see with new operators, they'll be driving around with that bucket way up in the sky, fully loaded right there. And they'll be doing this. They'll be driving, they'll be backing up too high. But I can feel right now my whole back end is loose. Just doing that, I can feel it. Typically what happens is they tip forward. Now it is common. I've seen it happen. I've had a new operator do it, someone who's training on our site, and they kind of panic. And that's why I like to practice this a little bit. So as much as that's the most common thing, it's honestly the most easy to recover from. You just can't panic with it. And so what I do, I'm gonna show you an example here. So I have got a full load of bucket. I kind of put an intentional trench right in front of me because I want to force this to show it what it looks like. And again, if you have a training area, I recommend getting in this position so you're used to it. Um, but if you just raise that bucket up about halfway, uh, what I'm going to do then is I, I'm going to hold on here. This is also why seatbelt is really, really important. If I just go forward here, what's going to happen is I'm going to do that. And you're, if I pull back, typically at this point, I'm going to use my handheld camera. This is where a new operator is flipping out. They're hitting the gas. I've seen their foot get stuck on the throttle and they're just freaking out because they're sitting there leaning. I mean, this isn't nearly as bad as it could be. I could make it even worse, um, but it happens on a job site. Now, if you're in this configuration, the first thing, if you get in this position, just calm down, sit tight for a sec, make sure you know, you're held in place, you're fine. 
And then it's really easy to write yourself. All you really have to do, you're gonna use the boom arm just to pick up that front end. So if I just go down, push right hand forward, and I can start trying to back out of it, and I'm pushing it down. And I'm out of it. Uh, at that point, you know, it's probably good to park it, just get out, make sure there's no damage anywhere else if you got in that situation. So uh, again, real easy. I'm gonna use this to dump. Okay, other than that for center of gravity is just understanding the uh, limitations for your machine going on slopes. Again, if you don't have a bucket, uh, a full load in the front, your counterweight's in the back. So, you know, this is a drastic pile here, so I'm not necessarily gonna be able to even try and get up this. But you'll see how if I go up, if I were to keep pushing this, now this is a bad situation, especially if I raise my bucket up and I'm above my head, uh, this has the potential to roll backwards. Again, wouldn't it be tough to get out of that one? Um, but that's one thing, uh, just making sure where your weight is. So if I was empty like this, best thing to do on these would generally be to go up in reverse. So a lot of times, if you get in this situation where you have to go up a steep hill, you're gonna try and go up like this. And this hill is just too much. I'd have to smooth this out a little bit more, but uh, whether you're going on a slope or whatnot, understand your machine and your center of gravity. If you have a, depending on your attachment, if you have a load of dirt or anything like that, it's important to know that. So again, overall, just understand your center of gravity on your machine. Okay, so those are our advanced skills. Uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed that. Put in comments below if you've got a lot of experience or tips or tricks for grading, spreading, things like that. Love to hear them. Again, thanks for watching. <laughs>